It's a parade inside my city, yeah. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. Parade inside my city, yeah. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. I love when he say that. Like, I like the NBA Young Boy song, but John Morant really he sold it for me. I, I walk around saying that all the time. So, without further ado, as you can tell, today I will be doing a celebrity natal chart reading on the basketball player, John ja Morant. I hope I'm saying his name right, y'all. I don't be knowing these folks' names like that. Especially when we talk about, like, sports. I'm not really into sports. But I did want to discuss his natal chart because of the controversy that he has brought upon himself specifically outside or off of the basketball court. So for those of you all who are unaware, John Morant is a uh, basketball player. I forgot what team he plays for. Like I said, I don't know nothing about these sports like that, y'all. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Y'all let me know in the comment section. I know somebody's going to correct me. But he's from Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, that's what I do know. And then I also know that um, he's kind of young, right? He was born in 99. And like a lot of young men, but, you know, specifically him in his case, he seems to be going through this like phase where he is being a lot more reckless, um, just unpredictable. For instance, he made headlines after a video surfaced of him. He did a live stream a while back, like flashing a gun, you know, drinking, hanging out with strippers at the strip club. And these are things like none of these things are like out of the ordinary, especially when we talk about men who make lots of money, athletes, whatever. But when you are in the NBA and for a lot of, you know, athletes in general, there's like a code of ethics or there's just a certain way that they're supposed to engage and carry themselves. And I don't know if some of it has to do with the fact that a lot of these men have like endorsements and you know, they don't want to make the team look bad and, you know, whatever the case may be. But he's been getting a lot of flack for a lot of this reckless behavior. And a lot of people are saying like, well, he's trying to be something he's not, especially when it comes to him waving guns, showing off the pole, just being real extra and daredevilish and just doing things that have a lot of people just questioning like why he's doing it basically and um so yeah I want to look at his natal chart to see where this is coming from so let's go ahead and get started because we we got some things to get into if you are new here welcome welcome to my channel it's here that we use information from celestial bodies to help us gain a better understanding of our favorite celebrities world events but most importantly our damn selves so go ahead hit that thumbs up button subscribe to become part of the family come on in and have a seat okay and if you are interested in booking your own natal chart reading contact me at astro world Astro, W-E-R-L-D at gmail.com. And we can go ahead and get you squared away on today. I am wrapping up a lot of my uh, older consultations. So I have some new availabilities coming up. And yeah, we can go ahead and get down like that. So when it comes to Ja Morant, he was born on August 10th, 1999 in Memphis, Tennessee. And right off top, he has a lot of athletic indicators which makes a lot of sense considering that he is a professional basketball player when it comes to athleticism that is fire energy all day long so you'll see a lot of athletes have very heavy whether it be leo aries sagittarian energy especially when we talk about the planet mars or they could have mars being a very active component when it comes to like aspecting uh, other parts of their chart. Now, John Morant is a very heavy, heavy Leo individual as he was born on the 10th, the number one, as well as the number 10, both carry a lot of energy signature associated with the sun. Not to mention Ja is a Leo sun moon. And then he has that North node at the 12th degree of Leo as well. So heavy, 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 heavy Leo energy. 
Okay. And one of my first takeaways, um, even just upon looking at this, was the fact that a lot of this Leo energy just so happens to be squaring his Mars at the 16th degree of Scorpio. So, for instance, it's definitely squaring his sun. It's definitely squaring his north node. And it could potentially be squaring his Mars, depending on exactly what time he was born, because the moon changes so much. Um, but we know definitively he has his sun and his north node squaring Mars. And when we talk about that square between Leo and Scorpio, I noticed this in the charts of a lot of people who end up getting caught up whenever they're doing things that they have no business doing. And this is because Scorpio in its essence deals with underhanded things. Scorpio could deal with criminality. It could deal with, you know, doing things that you're not supposed to do. Um, things that are taboo, things that could just be considered to be just, you know, uh, not acceptable parts of society or things that, like I said, people, there's there's some kind of forbidden mystique around it, so to speak. Um, and so when we talk about men or just people in general who could be into crime or people who have prominent Scorpio placements, especially when we talk about Mars and Scorpio, and they also possess Leo energy, these are people who end up getting found out very quickly because Leo, unlike Scorpio, that likes to be underground and out of view, Leo tends to attract a lot of attention. So when you have prominent Leo energy squaring Scorpio, it's kind of a perfect recipe for a disaster because these will be like the criminals who actually like to flash and show off what they got, brag about the things that they've done. And now you don't put yourself in a whole pickle. And obviously this doesn't apply to, to Ja Morant in the sense that like he's a criminal. That's not what I'm implying. But his chart does carry some similarities to similar charts that I've seen from guys in general who have gotten themselves caught up due to a lot of their either underhanded behavior, whether it be crime, whether it be once again, just them doing even deviant things. Scorpio deals with deviancy, right? Uh, that Mars and Scorpio can produce a potential troublemaker or a person who just has a hard time resisting temptation, you know, when it comes to doing wrong. And that could look differently for different people. For example, King Vine. King Vine was a Leo, but he did have um, Scorpio on the North Node. And I can't remember if his son was squaring his North Node, I think. Don't quote me. But just to further illustrate how that Leo Scorpio square tends to work, King Vaughn was very, very public, very well known, had a lot of attention, a lot of notoriety, and mainly for his reputation in the streets, right? The man was a known killer, okay? Killer like no other, and, and was really true to everything that he said in his music. And it was almost to the point where even in hindsight, people would talk about him bragging about it. And it wasn't until after the man passed that collectively everybody kind of started realizing like not only did he do everything he told us he did it was in our faces it was in plain sight and so had he still been alive eventually he probably would have ended up going back to jail okay same thing with um uh uh what's his name young thug young thug is a leo as well leo son and he has his son squaring his scorpio moon my guy is currently trying to beat a Rico case that places him at the top of an entire criminal organization, a criminal enterprise. And he too had songs where he would brag about things that he did. And it wasn't until hindsight, people started matching up facts and information and saying, damn, Jeffrey was not playing. Okay. Young Thug really meant everything he said, but he was so flashy and so obnoxious that Leo energy would cause a person to tell on themselves. And so if you have a lot of Scorpio energy going on as well, and you are in fact somebody involved in deviant shit, it's a matter of time before you get found out. A lot of times these people tell on themselves. So how does this relate to Ja Morant? Well, there was a video that he did where he was flashing a firearm. Mars can deal with weaponry. It can deal with guns. So you can even look at this Mars at the 16th degree of Scorpio swearing Ja's son as him you know, first of all, being attracted to guns, 
you know, these are people who could collect guns, you know, just being really drawn towards firearms, but then showing it off like the type of guy who who will get a new pole and then show it off. And then be the main ones who get killed because it's like you, you showing it. But when somebody ran down on your ass, you you died with it on you. And that's very symbolic of that Mars at the 16th degree of Scorpio. So if I were him, I would be careful. He also has this Mars square in that Aquarius South Node. Um, you know, the South Node, uh, specifically Aquarius on the South Node, can deal with um, him getting caught up with the content that he posts online, right? Going online, streaming online, waving the gun online or whatever, and getting a lot of like outrage and things like that. Same thing with his Mars squaring his Uranus at the 14th degree. He just needs to be careful because he gives me a nigga who will be showing off his gun, playing with a gun, and then it accidentally go off. And that is evident with his Mars at that 16th degree of Scorpio squaring his Uranus, Okay, that could be indicative of him shooting someone else on accident, especially with the number 16 dealing with tragedies. That could be a tragic death or something that he didn't see coming with Mars at that 16th degree of Scorpio. So he needs to be careful. But just in general, that could also just deal with maybe he is somebody who has known a lot of people who have passed away. He also has his Venus at the second degree of uh, Virgo, rather squaring his Chiron at the 27th degree of Scorpio. That could be a friend or, you know, somebody that he loved or, you know, an ex or whatever the case who passes on or meets an untimely demise, which when you think about his background, he comes from Memphis and Memphis is one of those cities where it is just the crime rate ridiculous. So that actually makes a lot of sense in that respect. However, when we talk about Aquarius South Nodes, even those with Uranus aspecting their South Node, these are individuals who a lot of times, even though they're destined for fame, hence that Leo North Node, and even more so in Jaws' case, considering his moon and sun in Leo, destined for fame, where he was just kind of destined to be this uh, very popular athlete, the main core of who they are it's like it, it hasn't really caught up to that. These are individuals who can kind of exist outside of the parameters of what people find to be acceptable. And because of that, it's very easy for an Aquarius South Node to get the reputation of being like a troublemaker, somebody who doesn't really follow the rules. You know, Aquarians can be contrarians. And this is just natural. Like it comes natural to them. If everybody has to be one way, I'm going to be the other way. Leo is more indicative of the type of popularity that you get when everybody knows you and likes you. Aquarius is more so infamous. Aquarius is more so, you know, like controversial. And this is going to be magnified with Jaws Mars, once again, at that 16th degree of Scorpio, squaring his uh, south node and squaring his Uranus, for that matter. Where because of a lot of, once again, deviant things that he gets into where he just can't sit still, where he, you know, is just always doing something. And the next thing you know, there's a lot of outrage. There's a lot of backlash that comes from it. That Aquarius energy could also give way to a person who centers a lot of who they are around their friends. And he does have Neptune at the second degree of uh, Aquarius opposing his moon. And that could be indicative of him mirroring the people around him where he is very impressionable when it comes to, you know, the the people around him in, in his life, the people who are supposed to be, you know, close to him. And this could be friends when we talk about that Aquarian energy. And obviously that could also set a person up for disaster. But mainly the unpredictability of Aquarius on the South Node or a person with Aquarius on the South Node is what tends to get these people into hot water. And this is also, once again, reinforced with Jaws, Mars, squaring Uranus in that South Node, where you just don't know what to expect from him. He really is like a wild card. And unfortunately for him, he just so happens to also have his Uranus squaring Saturn. I believe that Saturn is also squaring his nose as well. Um, it's squaring his sun. So, and with his Saturn being placed at the 16th degree of Taurus, this could deal with where anytime he gets out of pocket, he's going to be, there's going to be consequences. 
And a lot of times those consequences could be like financial consequences and repercussions when we talk about Saturn and Taurus. So whether it be getting a sponsorship pulled, although I think one spon- one company said that they were going to stand behind him. But for instance, let's say if this behavior were to continue, he would absolutely lose some money. Like absolutely. Where you know he can face a lot of um, punishment or correction in that regard, having to pay fines and things like that. And karmically, this is a struggle that he has, and it could exacerbate a lot of the issues that he may experience when it comes to, like, authority figures. A lot of Aquarius South nodes hate being told what to do. And so considering that he has Saturn and Taurus squaring his Aquarius South node, squaring his Uranus and Aquarius, you know, that could point to a person, even when it comes to just how he was raised and parented, even in school and things of that nature, he may have been somebody or the type of person who just had a really hard time following those standard traditional outlines. Taurus is very traditional. So Saturn and Taurus is very conservative. We're like, the standard is here. The bar is here. This is what is expected of you. And the fact that it's squaring his nose, especially that Uranus and that Aquarius South note could point to where naturally jaw somebody who, who has a hard time living up to that, where it could create a lot of confliction and affliction within himself. It's like, I might like the money, but I want to do what I want to do. I, want, I value my independence more. But the main operative in this lifetime as a Leo North node for him is to learn how to channel a lot of that into once again, like a lot of his extracurricular activities, sports, and, you know, show up, do his job and and work more so on his like likability factor. Also learning how to be more of a leader than a follower, especially as it pertains to like the people around him, his friends and people who are, um, you know, influencing him in certain ways that he may or may not be aware of. Leo is also one of those signs too, because it rules the fifth house when it comes to recreation, parties. Leos can be party animals, but depending on how this Leo energy is aspected, things could go left. You know, it could get to the point where these are people who can be very obnoxious drunks or just really hard to deal with. And so if they are wild like that, it can make them even more problematic. And the fact that Ja does have his moon opposing Neptune, that could deal with where he can get out of control, especially when alcohol or drugs are, you know, introduced to the picture. His son, Mars, square with that Mars at the 16th degree of Scorpio, that could be a person who, like, parties until they black out. You know, they go hard. Where there could even be this kind of self-destructive tendency to him. He also has his Chiron and Scorpio running contra parallel to his son. Um, and Chiron in any adverse aspect to the sun could be a, a really telltale indicator of someone who could have a hard time um, just acting right. These are people who could just be off. They're always going to be like troublemakers to a certain extent, it, it, you know, is the best way to put it. These are people who have a hard time following like protocol and regular programming. That contra parallel between Jaws, Chiron, and Scorpio and his son will make it so that like he's always going to be somebody who feels like maybe even that he should be the exception to the rules. You know, he also has Neptune squaring his Jupiter at the fourth degree of Taurus. That could also be like um, somebody either relieving him from a, a contract or him being stuck in a contract, depending on how you want to look at it or like hell hostage, feeling like he's held hostage in a contract, especially due to money or whatever the situation may be. This could also even be like a aspect that could indicate a person being out of control, especially as it pertains to like their drinking and this and that. And I don't know if he has an alcohol problem. He might, he may very well have an alcohol or a drug problem because he also has mercury in opposition to Neptune. So when this man like gets a dose of that party life, it really activates all of these other uh, harsher aspects in his chart that can make him somebody that is off the motherfucking chain, off the chain, Moon in opposition to Uranus. I mean, he's, he, he, yeah. His, in this lifetime, he is supposed to be a person who has to learn how to work on his, like, uh, likability factor and pour more of who he is into, you know, what he does, his career, and just leave it there. 
So this concludes my reading on Mr. Ja. Y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Damn, he also has his son in opposition to Uranus too. Yeah, it's hard to tell him what to do. It's hard to tell him what to do. But what y'all think about this? Let me know. Make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye.